Hi guys, today we're doing SQL injection and here we go. So what is SQL injection? There's lots of different types of injection in general. There's SQL injection, LDAP injection, XPath injection, XQuery injection, XSLT, HTML injection, XML injection, uh, operating system, command injection, there's loads of types. So here we have a web application called Altoro Mutual. It's a vulnerable web application made for IBM AppScan and it demonstrates web application vulnerabilities and AppScan picks them up basically. So we're going to be using this as our vulnerable web application to demonstrate SQL injection so that you have a basic understanding. So in this case we have a sample software stack. We have our web application running on the top layer, our runtime environment, PHP, or it could be Java or whatever. And then we have other applications running on the system, uh, such as a web a web server or a database, Apache, MySQL, and then the underlying operating system and its libraries. Linux or Windows and that's just a simple software stack and injection is basically taking commands and making them run underneath the web application so you're you're escaping uh, the layer and taking control of the underlying layers um, that's what we're going to be doing today so I'll show you an example of a different software stack. Um, this is a mobile phone, a Dalvik runtime environment, a modified version of Java, basically. <coughs> um, basically, if you escape the top layer and take control of the underlying layers, you've injected into the system. So the concept remains the same, no matter how complex these diagrams look it's the same thing. Um, so I'll show you now on Altoro Mutual how we can inject into the system. Um, normally you would log in say with the username test and password example and it says login failed. Now they have errors enabled on this website. So in order to discover what type of database they're using, we have to force it to display an error that it wasn't expecting. So we'll give it unexpected input, such as test, um, quote, semicolon, and maybe a hash symbol or a pound symbol. And then that will comment out the rest of the statement on the system causing the statement to be valid but um, modified for our um, malicious purposes. So we'll run that and we'll see what sort of output it gives us. So you can see here it's after um, giving us way too much information. D drive, downloads, Altura Mutual 6 website, bank login. We, we're getting information about the system and possibly about the underlying database. So, what types of databases are there? There's uh, rash relational databases, such as IBM DB2, Microsoft Access, MySQL, Postgres, SQLite, Apache Derby. Then you have document-oriented database, such as MongoDB, CouchDB. Then you have object-oriented da object databases, uh, used for serializing your classes or whatever. And then you have other types of databases, such as spatial databases, uh, such, as, such as the one the ESRI makes, or you could have plugins to relational databases, such as the PostGIS plugin for Postgres. Um, so really the point I'm making is nobody knows all the different languages for manipulating these databases. So in order to be able to move around and manipulate it without having to become a researcher in the field and 
know everything there is to know, you can use a fuzzer to force an error. So it's just a dictionary of um, uh, input that causes errors. So I'll give you an example here of the SQL injection payloads in FuzzDB 1.09 and you can see here attack payloads um, SQL injection detect uh, generic blind fuzz um, MS SQL uh, Oracle so we'll try the generic file here and we'll bring this over and you can see that um, these statements are not valid statements these are just trying to screw things up and you can see that it's commenting at the end of the line um, in order to cause an error so we'll just we'll paste this in and see if it gives us an error uh, basic thing so we'll close that and we don't need the fuzz anymore so we'll put that down there and we sign in and we'll put in our fuzz there and it causes an error this is exactly what we wanted it to do but it wouldn't always so you have to try a few of them to see if it causes an error um, so let's use an automated tool to do the work for us so we don't have to learn how the database works and what sort of statement syntax we have to use the automated tool will do it for us we just want access to the system basically so we're going to use um, a tool called SQL map um, so we'll sign in here and on Firefox what version are we using 17.0.1 uh, so we can open the debugging console by pressing control shift K and uh, disable CSS JavaScript and logging and make sure that log request and response bodies is enabled and then we can type in our uh, payload such as a uh, test uh, quote semicolon hash and we'll press login cause an error and you should be able to see up here at the top in the debugging console that there a request there has been logged and if we click on that we can see that it's a post request being sent to this URL and you can see the parameters, you can see your cookies, you can see um, the response, you can see the server type, it's all there. So we're going to use this for our SQL map um, parameters to the application. It's a Python script basically. So yeah, We have that over here so um, here is our SQL map uh, yeah we're gonna run that actually I'll show you some of the stuff so we're just gonna run this one here uh, this uh, SQL map dot py so we'll run that and you can see here that it's about to run so we're running a dump all to get as much information out of the database and print it to the terminal we have minus u for our url uh, data for our um, parameters to the url and then uh, that should be enough so that'll do table discovery and union statements and it'll get all the as much information out of the database as it can using every method possible so we'll run that and see if it can get us a uh, login okay success we have something uh, do you want to use column uh, we'll quit now we, we have we have our information so uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. You can see here that it's found a table called users. It's found the database is Microsoft Access. Um, user ID column, username column, password column. Uh, username and password column are usually the ones we're interested in. Um, so what is the risk 
obviously uh, the user gets access to the system but they can modify the database not just read it and in some cases they can actually get command line access to the system from the database so not just command line access to the database they can actually spawn a bash shell and add users, install packages, do all sorts of stuff so that's the risk what's the solution? a good solution is to encode your input and filter your output that prevent that's the same as with cross-site scripting um, you're preserving as much information as possible but preventing the attacker from executing commands that you didn't specify that they could so after that you should disable errors on your web interface so that they're not able to detect what system you have after that um, you should run your database in the user on the system as the database user or Microsoft Access user that way if they do take control of your database they're restricted ac they have restricted access on the system so if you have it running as root or an administrator they'll have much more control if they manage to hack into your database than if it was some uh, insignificant user who doesn't have control like a guest um, you should perimeterize your statements, it's best practice and also randomize your table names and column names to make discovery more difficult because you can see that um, table users is going to be the first one they check or usernames or something like that but if you randomize it it's much more difficult for an attacker to be able to know where to look um, there was a famous case that the Yahoo database was hacked and they actually got the wrong table uh, it was all hashed and salted but um, they got rainbow tables and they recovered the data but then they realized that they had actually recovered the wrong data um, so now that we actually have the login uh, jsmith demo1234 um, let's just try that out just just to see if it works. So we'll close our debugging console there. We'll sign in. J Smith and demo one two three four with the capital D for demo and log in. Oh, we're in. We have access. So um, there you are. SQL injection. Thanks very much for watching.